Welcome to the No New Friends podcast, the podcast for adults who like to laugh at adulting. We are so excited for you to start your No New Friends podcast journey. Now, in the first 20 episodes, we've got old microphones that we kind of piece together. So our audio is a little bit rough for the first eh, 20 or so episodes. But there are some classic episodes in that first 20 that we reference all throughout our future episodes of the No New Friends podcast. So just bear with us on that audio. I apologize. But it gets better. We get brand new microphones uh, right around episode 20 or so. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the No New Friends podcast. You are listening to the No New Friends podcast. Welcome, everybody. Today is Friday, March 5th, 2021. With me, as always, my beautiful co-host, Mary. Mary, hello. And, uh, How's it going? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's good to have you as always. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to participate in the show, you can always message us. And if we like your message, it may make it on air. Uh, please follow us and subscribe uh, and share on any podcast platform. Uh, we now have a Facebook page. Very excited about that. So like and follow us on Facebook. That's at No New Friends Podcast. And then, of course, our email address is No New Friends Podcast at Yahoo.com. If you'd like to advertise your business or service, we'd love to help you out with that. So with that all out of the way, Mary, how the hell are you today? Um, I'm going to be very honest. Uh, I am a little frustrated, and I hate to say that. Um, Oh, oh, for do two we have, reasons. Do we have Martini Mary? Oh, no, it's not Martini Mary, but I'm going to tell you, the time I've had, I wish it was Martini Mary at this you know, point. Um, for people who don't know us who have heard the first two episodes, they're going to think we're a bunch of alcoholics. We're, we're raging alcoholics. Yeah, I was I'm talking, not, I promise. I was talking to my dad about that today, and he's like, well, the first episode was all about drinking, and uh, so far the second episode is about drinking. And I'm like, oh, no, well, we've got to no. change the narrative of, all our, right, all right. of our show. Well, so... Here's what happened. Uh, back to the car line situation. Oh, um, so I pick up Dexter, the nine-year-old, out of the elementary school car line to discover that someone had gifted him with a kazoo. There's a special I, place in hell for people who I, gift children noisemakers. I don't know what I've done for the good Lord to allow this to happen to me. Um, but I will repent, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Um, the worst part of this though, is that we immediately go to wait in the middle school car line. So I had a solid 30 minutes of the musical stylings of Dexter and his kazoo. Um, were they uh, songs or was it just noises? Oh, both. It was a beautiful blend of both. Um, and then he was hanging out the window playing for other people. Um, oh, no. So that's always good. Um, so the middle schooler gets in the car. We're driving home, talking about stuff, ask her to clean up her room. And it just, a bomb blew off. I don't know oh, what no. happened. Um, and and you know, she? she's almost 12. Oh gosh, she's right there, almost at thirteen. So like twelve is like the worst because they 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 think they're a teenager. So like mm -hmm. the horns are starting to grow, and once they well, hit 13, I think, they're through. Well, she's bigger than I am, so you know I think she already has that <laughs> that complex that I have to worry so about. She, um, she uses intimidation. She does use intimidation, um, but you know I, her and I typically get along really well. Uh, she's I would say a mini me, but. She's not. Um, it, we have a lot not in common as well. Uh, and there's been, I don't know how familiar you are with the Gen Z versus millennial um, thing that's been going around. I am a millennial. I'm a proud millennial, but I'm you are a late definitely one. millennial. Yes, but I'm the like the early ish millennials because they started. I think the year I was born. Well, it depends on on what graph you look at because in in a lot of ways, it, it's in some graphs i'm considered a millennial um it, some of them they have like 1980 1978 and i was born in 79 so i'm like nah look i don't want to i don't want to break your heart but you are not a millennial it's okay embrace accept um 
And I didn't know that like the two generations had beef until I started seeing these things on social Every media. Every generation has beef. And Gen X on, oh, they millennials. Do. Millennials hate yeah, Gen Z. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't hate Gen Z. I think it's great that they're empowered. They're trying to make a difference. Um, they're going to save the world. I think so. But I, you know, there's a lot that I don't know about that generation. Uh, and I was just having a conversation with Zoe and I mentioned uh, soap operas and she had no idea what I was talking about. It's like days of our lives. No. Wow. Okay. I don't, I don't know what I've done. Obviously I'm parenting like a millennial, I guess, but there's <laughs> just so much, like there's such a difference between the generations. I mean, you're raising Gen Z's, I'm, right? I'm all over the place. Well, Darren's 20. So he acts like a millennial at times, but he's also the worst millennial ever because a lot of times millennials don't know history. Like if, if it happened before they were born, they don't know about it, nor do they care about it, especially in pop culture. Darren is is not like that. Like he he knows the Beach Boys. He knows he knows things even earlier than my generation, like Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. But I think a lot of that is because of the Jersey Boys Broadway show. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of 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 uh, Gen X pop culture that he knows and cares about, but typically millennials don't give a crap about what happened. Well, I, I mean, I care about it and I'm a millennial. I think you mean Gen Z. Maybe it's Gen Z then. Look, I'm not trying to talk shit about Gen Z here, but there's a couple of things I need to address. The things uh, that I me, saw that before you go on, <laughs> what I like about uh, what I don't like about Gen Z, sorry, what I like about Gen Z is that they are empowered. They're they've mm -hmm. got a voice like Millennials were like, we want to see it at the table. Gen Z are like, no, we, we're going to speak at this table. What I don't like is the damn paper straws. I feel like that, even though like we're saving the environment and like when I was in school, it was like, save the earth, save the earth. And I was like, well, that's not really my problem. That's my kid's problem. But like Gen Z, it's like, this is our problem. So we're going to do something about it. And now we well, have the thing. Yeah. They're the taking accountability for our actions, which right, is great. Exactly. <laughs> that's wonderful. Exactly. Continue with where you were going. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So the first things that I saw where they were uh, dragging us millennials were uh, side parts, uh, skinny jeans. Wait, and that, what was laughing the first one? side parts, like your hair parted to the side and not okay. down the middle. Okay. Um, and then skinny jeans, mm -hmm. and then uh, the laughing emoji. And to right. that, I said when I brought it up to Zoe, I was like, "Well, I use like the little skeleton, like the dead face if something's funny." She goes, "Yeah, you're a dry texter." What and is that? And that was a term I, I right, I didn't know what that me it meant, so I had to ask. And basically, if you use proper grammar. Or proper, um, you know, back and forth conversation. Like if I were to say hi and you uh -huh. said hi back and you spelt it right, we are dry texters. I know. I get it. So the key is to use all uppercase and to misspell words. Oh, I don't okay. know. I don't. It's something I don't understand. So but like illiteracy is celebrated. A little bit. But to that, I say I can write in cursive and you can't. So <laughs> ha. I cursive. see you and I double you. Yeah. When was the last time you wrote in cursive, though? I, I think all of my writing is a hybrid. Okay. And, and I have terrible handwriting. No, that of a kindergartner. No, have yeah, you seen I do. My handwriting? Yes, I have, and it's terrible. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's, I've got serial killer handwriting. You do. I was going to mention that, but I don't want to hurt your feelings. Well, because you're, you're my friend. You're a psychopath because. Um, but okay, you kept your kids' teeth. <laughs> that was rightfully earned. That's gross. Uh, I can't. I'm sentimental. I can't. Um, I'm sentimental. I'm sentimental. What can I say? Uh, well, and here's the thing. I like my skinny jeans. I feel like I can move. I could, you know, karate kick if I needed to. Uh -huh. And I'm sure they don't make pants the proper length for me in my I, size. I hate skin. Well, I, first of all, I'm never going to attempt to wear skinny jeans because I'm fat and skinny jeans don't go on fat people. <laughs> no, they do. They totally no. do. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, I mean, I, I, I like my, uh, my testicles to be able to breathe. Uh, so I'm not hey. going to even try the skinny jean thing. I don't, I don't really love the skinny jean look there there's only a few people who can pull it off you pull it off my wife pulls it off very well but it's usually the, the shoes that go with it but i just don't get it and i definitely don't get when guys do it and i think it's again it's the gen z uh or millennial thing with the with the skinny jeans but i i don't well I yeah that, ridiculous. gen z wears like mom jeans now 
and I can't get that out of my head that that yeah. is awful. I, and, and again, I think it's it goes back to the empowerment and and they put on their mom jeans and now they're <laughs> making the rules. <laughs> right. Well, that, that wasn't where I was going, but you know, the, we come from a generation, and it, you know, the the beginning of the millennial generation and the end of the Gen X, where it was the short shorts and trying to get guy's attention and, and i'm not trying to come across as a sexist or or uh, i can't even say the word uh misogynistic, misogynistic. <laughs> yeah whatever but that was kind of like it's like let let's let's uh let's get ahead by using our looks or maybe that's not the intent but this is as a woman what you had to do to get ahead um as terrible as that that sounds and yeah, that actually that sounds really that. awful that no, may be something no. you want to edit out <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> and, and that's I, i'm not i'm not saying that that's something that women needed to do um as as a leader in my former uh jobs i've always tried to strive for your equality in, in in the in the genders and all that but I'm, I'm saying that like we came from a generation of the short shorts for whatever reason maybe i'm off base on why the short shorts were a thing but well we do live in attention. florida and it gets hit. well i don't wear short shorts because i want attention it's because i get hot and my legs would like to breathe yeah but and i have on, really good calves and sometimes i want to show I, those off Attention! <laughs> Look I, I, again. This, I may come across as as mis misogynistic here, and 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 that's not my intent. But you're not wearing short shorts for the temperature; it's to get attention. But are you wearing pants on hot days? No, I wear shorts all the time unless I'm at work, even I cold. Right. Days. Okay. So, but let's also look at the variety of shorts that we have to choose from. Typically, they aren't long. Like, right. well, but Bermuda shorts are aren't really a thing anymore. Well, yeah, I guess so. But isn't it technically mom if I'm wearing it? Like, I am a mom, so therefore, the sweatpants I currently have on are mom's I mean, sweatpants. I, I guess the literal meaning would be uh, if you're a mom and you're wearing, I mean, like, I'm wearing my dad's shorts right now, I guess. Yeah, well, you are because they're probably cargo shorts, right? Those they're aren't definitely cool cargo shorts. But I don't even know what other type of shorts exist, like golfing shorts, tennis shorts. Like, what do you? What else can you wear? I've never seen those. I, I I've don't never know. seen such a thing. I yeah. only know cargo shorts, um, and they come in handy because you hold my keys in them. Yeah, and I appreciate that. So, in my opinion, mom jeans—they're canceled. Yeah, they cancel should them. be canceled. They should be canceled. That's what Gen Z does. They cancel everything. Well, so I'm they should be canceled that. except my daughters. My daughters must wear the mom jeans. Um, really, they need to be wearing ankle length dresses at all times. Uh, all right. Um, so can I catch you on the next episode of Handmaid's Tale or what? <laughs> right, exactly. Um, well, Netflix made a million dollars like every day off of that show, I'm pretty sure. Like they, <laughs> they thrived. Isn't that no, on that Hulu? Was I thought it was, it was on Handmaid Netflix. No, Hand Handmaid's Tale is on Hulu. Nah, is it? Yeah. I didn't watch it because I knew what I it was about. It. And remember, the two things I hate, injustice and humidity. And I'm pretty sure it involves both of those. So I just, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't stand for it. Um, I don't know. I talked to Rachel about that. She, she loved that show. But I feel like it, I don't know. Maybe I should give it a try. I feel like I'm just now catching up on some things that everyone raved about, like during the pandemic, like. I was behind the curve because I was busy watching like the Ted Bundy tapes. Um, <laughs> if it's murder or crime, I've watched it most likely. Did you watch the reboot of uh, Unsolved Mysteries? Oh, are you kidding me? Of course I did. Of course, like the yeah. day it dropped. Are you kidding me? It's yeah. my AIDS. You, you know, the, uh, the, the first part of the pandemic was, I, I, I call that the fun part of the pandemic, although... Yeah, it was a party pandemic. It, it was a party pandemic. Months. Let's buy as much alcohol as we can, stock mm -hmm. up for two weeks, three times in one week. Um, <laughs> but also, we had some gems on Netflix because Netflix and Hulu and all of those uh, streaming services recognize that we're not going out doing anything. We're not going to movies. So let's capitalize on subscriptions by dropping things like love is blind and <laughs> the creme de la creme tiger king listen maybe these platforms are the cause of uh covid19 <laughs> they actually started it so that they could capitalize on it no bill, um, bill gates and the and the towers and the windmills oh yeah the yeah the 5g towers i can't um okay so tiger king i was all over yeah like i jumped on that so fast but i was behind the curve with love is blind see and i, I kept think, seeing I, all these i feel like ahead. love is blind is right up your alley um well 
yes, to an extent, I enjoyed it, but like the Jessica and what Mark situation, yes. like I'm 34. I, I, we just have to keep reminding everyone. Uh, she <laughs> like, was I, the, I, she, she was, was the worst. worst. She was but the worst. There, there, it was so There's, funny because she was the most hated person. And then Carol Baskin comes along and is like, hold my beer. Yeah, no, she's like, hold my uh, my uh, ex-husband or dead husband that I fed to tigers. Here I am. Alleged. Alleged. Oh, alleged. Okay. Um, so fun did you fact. Ever watch Love is Blind? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. But um, wait a minute. Fun fact about Tiger King. So that actual, the um, big cat rescue. Yeah. is in Florida. And yep. I, through my professional uh, surroundings and where I was, was a part of the same association as Big Cat Rescue. Um, so small world, that's it. Yeah. That was my fun fact. <laughs> so my, you know, Rachel is an animal lover and she actually donated to Big Cat Rescue before, oh! before Tiger King. You know, she didn't know. She just, you know, was this big cat sanctuary uh, where they were being rescued. And after I watched probably two or three episodes, I'm like, babe, nope, you can't, can't, no more money to her. But, you know, who knows? That bitch Carol much, Baskin. <laughs> that bitch Carol Baskin. Who knows how much of it was exaggerated or embellished? Uh, who knows? But. Hey, we're going to go to break. You're listening to the No New Friends podcast. We'll be right back. No New Friends podcast is now using Nikki Podcast Preparations Incorporated which is a podcast management consultant agency of services that helps independent podcasts obtain more plays, downloads, guests, sponsors, and a bunch of the legwork behind the microphone when it comes to podcasting. CEO Nick can be contacted via Twitter or Instagram at Nikki PPINC. And if you tell him that the No New Friends podcast sent you, we'll both get a 25% discount. Nikki has helped accumulate millions upon millions of downloads, tens of thousands of dollars in sponsorships, celebrity guests, and much more. So just shoot him a direct message to get your podcast growing. Welcome back to the No New Friends podcast. Just a reminder, like us on Facebook at No New Friends Podcast. Also email us if you'd like to sponsor the show or if you'd like your email read on the air. No New, no new Friends Podcast at yahoo.com. And don't forget to like, follow, share, support, subscribe, whatever it's called on whatever platform you're using. Get the word out there about us. It is up to you, our listeners, to help us spread this thing. We want to take the world by storm, and uh, we think we have a good product. And I just lost Mary's video. I saw the ceiling. So just for, so our listeners know, we use Zoom uh, since we're doing this virtually because there's a pandemic. So uh, a lot of times we get to see each other's reactions or what's going on in the background. And at some point, if this thing gets huge, we're going to start our own YouTube channel and put these episodes on YouTube from us just chatting back and forth. <laughs> it's like you're sitting at the table with us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You could be the new friend. You could be, you could be the new friend and we're going to start vetting friends soon. We're going to start having we some are. guests. Maybe next week I'm, I'm working on our first guest next week. Someone that, that I promised could be our first <laughs> guest. We're trying to make friends. <laughs> we're trying. It's not really about us not wanting new friends. It's we really can't make new friends because we're, we're socially awkward. We, well, yes, that's, well, thanks a lot. First of all. <laughs> Um, how do you, uh, you, you, it's, oh, oh yeah, that's I true. Um, him in with my awkwardness. Uh, yes, I did. I, yeah, I, oof, I seduce with my awkwardness. Seduce You're right. With your awkwardness. Yep. There you go. Yep, so that's it. <laughs> before the break, we were talking a little bit about Netflix, uh, the, the beauty that was Tiger King and love is blind at the beginning of the pandemic. And during the break, Mary and I were talking, you just started a new show that almost caused you to be late. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I'm behind, like I said, so I just started the crown and boy, I got sucked in sucked right in and on Wednesdays it's early release day so the kids get out an hour earlier and your girl's just chilling on the couch with my <laughs> sparkling water and my white cheddar popcorn 
feet propped up, just binging the crown. And I happened to look down and saw that it was literally time, like school was out. Like I was late to the car line. Like I was in the position of the car line that no one wants to be. It's not at the very end and it's nowhere near the beginning. So you've got to wait. And then your kid's mad, especially if it's my child. Now, do you yes, like because to be, they had to wait. Uh, do you like to be in the middle of the line or at the end? Because I used There's... I used to try to wait as long as I could so that when I by the time I got there, the line was ending and it's now free flowing. So I'm not the last parent and my kids not gonna be mad at me because they still think I'm kind of in the line, but I, I, I'm not quite I haven't I've only waited about a minute. So my this is my strategy and it's I think it's different at every school. So if you're a parent and you're listening to this, uh, it may or may not work for you. But what I try to do is at um, elementary school specifically arrive 10 minutes before the dismissal time. Okay. 10 minutes. That's the sweet spot because all the crazy moms are up in the front. <laughs> all um, the, all the Karens. All the Karens. Well, they're like the the uh, PTA moms, you know, that's okay. something I tried, but it didn't stick. Like I am not a PTA <laughs> mom. I will uh, sign up for it. I'll carry the card. I will pay my $25 every, you know, year or quarter or whatever it is. And there you go. Like I will, that's the stint of my um, contribution. But anyways, 10 minutes beforehand, back to the crown. Holy hell, I'm so behind. It's so good. Like I, I, I I'm, I'm enjoying our conversation, but like, I want to go watch The Crown, too. Um, <laughs> so, so right now, I'm getting in the middle of The Crown binge watching. It's fine. It's okay. I, I forgive you. I did also binge watch uh, Murder, um, <laughs> Murder Among Mormons. <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, it came out. It was brand new. Oh, I, heck, pop I really don't like you. Pow, pow, pow. No, that's not how it happened. There were pipe bombs. Okay. Oh, and forged God. documents. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Okay. And it's only. I think there's three episodes. What streaming service is that on? That's on Netflix. Okay. I think yes, it's definitely on Netflix because from there I transitioned to The Crown. If it involves, you know, like a re- religion, murder, or scandal, sign me up. That's a trifecta. I will okay. be there all day. Um, did, yeah. Did you ever watch? There was a show. I think it was called Love on the Spectrum. I saw and- it. What did um, you think? I did, as, as, go ahead. I, I did not watch it um, okay. because I feel like I'm still like I'm still emotional about okay. um, my kiddos, and I'm still it's still a little raw because they're still developing. We're sure. going through seasons of regression, um, and so for me, it's almost too intrusive into that. Like I just okay. it's we experience That's- a lot every day with. Um, sure. their challenges and so watching it as entertainment mm-hmm. is not it doesn't make me feel good I don't like that necessarily that's been out for I I, I want to say almost a year I feel like it came out right at the beginning of the pandemic and I and, and I meant to talk to you about this a year ago because I was gonna watch it because from everything I heard it was done very respectfully and very mm-hmm. tastefully and, and actually brought some 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 great awareness. And I was going to talk to you about it because I, I didn't, because you're my best friend and because you live, you, you live uh, autism spectrum disorder in your daily life. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable watching it and getting the entertainment out of it without talking to you first about it. No. And it's not like ethically, I don't want to get entertainment out of it. I think for me, um, when your whole, I, almost whole day in existence revolves around being a caretaker um, Mm -hmm. and you just you're really inundated in that world you you just want to get away when you're trying to be entertained so I like to watch things that are not related to what my day-to-day looks like if that makes sense like sure and you know I think for me too it struck a chord because our kiddos are still young so we don't really know that trajectory of where their development is going to go so seeing that ending for other um you know people on the spectrum either way whether it's positive or negative gets more questions boiling in my mind that i don't have answers to so you know will grayson you know ever get married will dexter ever be able to tie his shoes um you know so we it's just at that phase right now that i don't know if I am ready. I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. So listen, it, anybody who listens to this episode, I, I'd love to get your feedback on, uh, I think it was called Love on the Spectrum. 
Yeah. Um, I, I would just love to get some feedback and, and get a good dialogue going because I've, I struggled, like, as you know, like I said, actually watching it and, and thank you for the insight. I know that was a lot of sharing and, and I appreciate it. Oh yeah. And, uh, anytime. And, and definitely way off the topic, but you know, when we were, talk <laughs> when we were talking about binging and, and I knew that this was a show that I wanted to check, I just wanted to get your, your, your opinion on it. I just, I just started watching a show and I actually finished the first season um, because I'm a huge bit. Well, big bang theory. I, I never finished the show. I stopped at season eight and just for no particular reason other than time. So mm -hmm. I rewatched it and actually finished it about two weeks ago. And for some reason, comedies in their series finales make me ball like a <laughs> middle school girl at the dance. I, I mean, I was crying so hard at the end of that. The same thing with The Office. The Office finale, I was in tears. Oh, well, yeah, that's... So I, I started watching, like, I, 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 I was missing the characters and the actors. So I'm watching Young Sheldon, which I had never watched. Mm -hmm. And I also, on HBO Max, watched the first season of The Flight Attendant. And I, I oh, that I, thing I, in, like, two days. Yes. Yeah, I, I binged that one, too. That Holy crap. Was, was so good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. And that was really good. She reminds me of uh, a girl that I was briefly and i use the word dating very very loosely but i had um a, 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 we you were dating her times. we went out you were dating times. her she wasn't dating you <laughs> she, she was dating what? everybody um <laughs> yeah I mean, this was like a brief 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 thing but she had to drink non-stop and I don't know if she ever woke up next to someone uh, dead, but man, what a great show that was. And, and like I said, oh, I, finished, I finished one season in two days. Another one that I'm not really proud of how I binge watched it was ABC's Once Upon a Time. Oh, uh, you know, I can't get into it. What? I, yeah, I feel like I, you and Zoe would love that. I started it, but I, I didn't get very far. How far and did it you wasn't, get? I don't remember. That's how fun alluring it was to me it's it's it can be there or cannot yeah and i so, it wouldn't so i started watching that show and and i i have a three season rule i i typically do not start watching a show until it's been on for at least three seasons i've got to have three seasons in the bank because then i know that the show's going to last and at least end like they're going to end it on their terms at some point or they're going to actually end the story i don't like mm -hmm. to, i've i've watched too many shows that are only on for one season and then i'm left hanging because they never it just gets canceled and they never finish the that's story. true i'm i'm in between that because uh my favorite is limited series those are my favorite i just yeah. watched one I highly recommend it. It was called Behind Her Eyes. Oh, Behind I, Her Eyes. Okay. If I was the whole time, like it, there's some parts where it's, I wouldn't say slow, but it's just, you know, you're viewing it. But whew, the end, good Lord, yeah. I still am not over it. Okay. Um, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I, definitely. So once upon a time, I started. <laughs> Back to the show I like. Well, I know. Yeah. I, I, never, I don't know, even know what you're talking about. So I started watching Once Upon a Time, and Mary, I watched this thing for 24 hours straight one day because Nerd. I was so interested. No, and I, I had to teach, like, I didn't sleep, and I had to teach a class at, at the Castleberry location that we worked at. I had to teach a bar class, and oh, I had God. zero sleep. Is that where the beer catch bucket came from? Is that where that idea was born? Probably. But here I, yeah, here I am in my mid-30s binge watching Once Upon a Time to all hours of the night. Another one that I've done that to where I lost sleep is uh, Lost. Oh, that was a good one. Great, great show. I uh, never finished it. Really? I feel like that's the story of my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I started out with really good intentions and then ugh, it falls off. Now, um, we, we were also talking the, during the break, Dexter, uh, I want. Yes. And, you know, I so, couldn't get into Dexter until the end of the season with the Trinity Killer. No. See, here's the thing. Okay. I, I'm going to full circle this for you. I, while I'm watching The Crown, Winston Churchill uh -huh. um he's the trinity killer like i can't detach the characters almost <laughs> a little bit like i'm like i know that you're playing winston churchill but are you also going to kill rita like i i don't know yeah so i, um, I 
I run into that in, in, in sorry, going back to Once Upon a Time. Uh, they, they had a season with Frozen, and the girl who played plays Anna from Frozen is also the the female lead in the first season of the Netflix show You. Oh, so I, that's well, another one. That I know. <laughs> I, like, we shouldn't like that show. We should not like it as much as we oh, do. Oh, man, let me tell you. Murder, conspiracy. But the thing is, he, he makes a lot of sense. He's trying to protect her from all the bad things around her. Like, what's wrong well, with also, that? Also, he is a bad thing always around her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's always nice to her. He treats her good. That's your un misogynistic point of view, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> that, that was a that was I was disturbed with how much I really liked that show. Um, okay, so I'm going to slide something in here. It's not Netflix. It's not Hulu. Let's talk about WandaVision for just one second. I haven't watched. Um, the I'm waiting uh, for all the episodes to drop. No, and then I'm going to watch it. I uh, I don't even know how we're friends right now. I <laughs> I. I wait for Fridays to come. Or it's Thursdays that it comes on, right? <gasps> I, I don't know. I don't See, know. See, I get so excited. And I, oof. It's See, but just, I'm so it's, spoiled. I like to watch, I like to binge watch a season. I had to do that with The Stand on CBS All Access. It, it dropped one episode at a time. So it took us nine weeks to watch it. I hate that. Oh, because you don't want to wait a week to watch it. You want to be able to watch it when you want it. it exactly. Exactly. When we come back, our very new segment, A History Time with Mary. You're listening to the No New Friends podcast. If you're looking to advertise your business or service, please email us at no new friends podcast at yahoo.com. A captive audience is ready to hear what you have to offer. Contact us today. Again, that email is no new friends podcast at yahoo.com. It's time to learn something and broaden our minds in a history from Mary. Welcome. Boy, do I have a lesson for you today. On this day in history, 2004, Martha Stewart convicted of a felony for obstructing justice, lying about why she unloaded her stocks just before they plummeted, uh, aka insider trading. Shame so, on uh, her. Shame, on, shame her. on her. But I feel like we need to address the fact that she is one of the few people who have gone to prison and came back more relevant and more profitable. Right? So congratulations, yeah. Snoop congratulations, Dogg Martha and Martha Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> yes, yes, best duo of all time. Uh, Snoop and old Martha, both spending time in the clank. And that was your history lesson for today. Here on the No New Friends podcast, we hope you learned something. That was History Time with Mary. Till next time, ta-ta. Thank you, Mary. That was a history time for Mary. We're going to be doing that every week. Wow, Martha Stewart spent some time in jail. Who knew? Some time in the old clank. But, I mean, really, her and Snoop Dogg, they're like BFFs now. They're making chip and guacamole commercials together. <laughs> yeah. Haven't you seen that? They, I think they have a cooking show together, too, don't they? What? Well, I, I think that so. makes, that makes sense. Wrong. She cooks for his um, cravings after the, or the munchies. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I could I could not. I couldn't. Um, yeah, so fun history, fun facts. Uh, yeah. I'll try to go back a little further, maybe. You know, 2004 wasn't very long ago, or no. at least to, my, to me it wasn't. Um, I still think 10 years ago was, like, in the 90s. I don't yeah. look at it. Is it, that's like 1990. Like, that. like we're closer to 2050 than we are 1990, and that don't that don't talk about things like that. <laughs> no, right? Like I I think 1990s was like, yeah, five ten years well, ago. That was like ten years ago, right? Yeah, like not 30. Like that's yeah, a, I was, a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Like I was living my best life, watching magical school bus. Yeah. Like I don't 
Well, how about oh, this? Wow. Back to the it's Future a... Part Two is now in the past. Stop. Because you're the right. Future, the future is now the past. It was 2015. Yeah. Wait, thanks so for what, uh, wrecking the. <laughs> right. What, so what, <laughs> thanks a lot, Scott. What did Back to the Future get right? Because I was obsessed with that movie because I wanted the hoverboard. I wanted that hoverboard so bad, and I never, I, 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 I never got into skateboarding or anything like that. But I wanted a hoverboard. So I would watch that movie over and over and over again just to get excited about it. I'm like, oh, my God, in 2015, we're going to have a hoverboard. We don't have – that. I mean, we have something that's, like, called a hoverboard, but it's not really a hoverboard. Yeah, it's, on, it's wheels. on wheels. Yeah. And it's extremely dangerous. Yeah. Ex no, I know. And my, my 15-year-old, who is, like, an accident waiting to happen at all times, has one. And I'm like, oh. I'm like baby girl, you are going to shatter your ankles. And she's like, no, I'm not old like you, Dad. Dang. Like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, well, one, I'm not old. Two, it just that that seems like such a hard thing to to ride. We we don't have flying cars yet, so that's a big disappointment. No. I feel like that would cut down on traffic quite a bit. No, because I can't be trusted to fill my gas tank ever. I hate getting gas. <laughs> no, my car would be flying out of the <laughs> dropping right well, out of the sky. They'll, they'll be solar solar powered. Solar powered oh. or, or yeah. Okay, I mean, cool. Like, that's you, you not fixed what that Dr. Future said, but that's my solution. I mean, like, how come um, Elon Musk hasn't come out with a flying car yet? Like, because he's waiting for the right time. Yeah, I mean, he's spent all this time sending a Tesla to to outer space. I mean, you know. Oh, speaking. It must of be nice to have a Tesla to just send. Yeah, I'd love to have know, one, right? especially or in the car line. I would love to take <laughs> that bad boy in the car. Line. Speaking of outer space, I saw this on Facebook yesterday. Oh God, here we go. Yeah, the <laughs> you know where I'm going. The uh, you know, 2020 had its bingo card, and I, and I feel like every other day I'm I'm posting about did you have this on the murder hornets or or the fire tornado or something like that. So now I guess we have to start a 2021 bingo card because they discovered now this happened back in 2014, but they finally made the discovery, and of course my Facebook won't load right now that they found a space hurricane uh, above. Well, Earth. what happens during a space hurricane? Uh, it pours down electrons. Yeah, so that sounds dangerous. I, I know, right? It, it it rained electrons. There were it, the the hurricane was 600 miles wide, made up of plasma, and had spiral arms. It was captured by satellites back in 2014, but was only recently uncovered by scientists. Uh, I guess this year, uh, it swirled in a counterclockwise direction above the North Pole for around eight hours before gradually breaking down. So space hurricane. Okay, so is this like a direct threat to us, or is it just interesting facts? Well, th it happened back in 2014, so it's no longer a direct threat to us. They well, I mean, like, will it happen again? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess it. I guess it could. I mean, anything's possible. It says plasma and magnetic fields in the atmosphere of planets exist throughout the universe. So the findings suggest space hurricanes should be a widespread phenomena. Wow, you know, I'm really proud of you for. Uh, researching and looking up things that are, um, you know, for the brain and, um, you know, kind of giving yourself some more knowledge. Meanwhile, Science I'm taking rocks. a quiz about what type of bread I am. Um, <laughs> it's, but, you know, thank you for filling that void for us on the show because, <laughs> My pleasure. Um, well, by well, the well, way, I'm um, rye, if you want to know. <laughs> Those things make no sense. What type of potato are you or what friends, the, the ones are like, what friends character are you or what Harry Potter character? I mean, yeah. they're just so manipulated. Yeah. Well, have you seen the one where it takes your face and gradually turns it into a character? Yeah, I have. I did it. And I was so mad. <laughs> it turned me into Peppa Pig. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't post it because I was so embarrassed. Peppa Pig. That's funny. Ow, do I look like a pig? Well, wow. no, don't answer no, that. No, 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 no. Not at all. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. If you're hungry or no, if you get hangry, oh, my God. So backstory. Mary and I are on a general manager's retreat back when we worked for one of the restaurants that we uh, we worked with. And... <laughs> The, our our boss was driving and she says, look, this is your 15 minute warning. I'm getting hangry and we're having fun. I mean, it's an eight hour trip from North Carolina. But no, I it, think I said it nicer though. I was like, you um, you're going to have to feed and water your pet Mary. Well, um, you said that, you said that, but then yeah. you gave us a 15 minute warning. And Correct. I have never seen you flip a switch except for like 
during the dinner rush on a Friday night when we're short staffed. Like that was the flip, the switch that you flipped. You went from running expo, <laughs> innocent pocket person, Mary into. Roar. I mean, it was, it was scary because you were, you were, you snapped at me and, uh, Oh man, don't don't let Mary get hangry. Yeah, that's um it's just keep snacks. I try to keep snacks on me. I know myself. <laughs> I know what happens. I know the inner beast, you know, it's yeah. it's only fair. So with that in mind, uh, and I and now this is the third week in a row, we're gonna bring up a similar or a story from the bachelor party weekend. We get up at seven o'clock in the morning after drinking till four the same morning and Everyone's like, well, let's go get breakfast. Well, I want to get an early day at the park. So I'm like, no, 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 we'll eat at the park. So he's <laughs> like, no sitting, no sitting yeah, for no breakfast. Sitting. Come we're on, we're let's going. Go. We're, let's move. So we stop at the donut place and I'm thinking, you know, it's a theme park. They're going to have gluten-free donuts, which they did not. So I, I said, you know what? I'm not going to eat uh, until Mary gets something to eat. So I'm, I'm like, just going to drink heavily. It's fine. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'll do. Well, I Adam, I, my, <laughs> my, for my intent was to start at noon. Uh, and it was like 10, 1030. And I'm scouring all over the universe for food for Mary. Oh, the universe. And Mary's like, you, you like what I did there? I did. I saw it. Mary finally says, I just, I just want some popcorn. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we go to the popcorn stand. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, beer doesn't start getting served until 11 a.m. So I'm going to push it till noon. I'm not going to start drinking till noon. I'll be damned. The first cart we go to that's got popcorn is serving beer at 1030 in the morning. And that was the downfall for the week. And that's where it started. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that was the middle of it. Yeah. Like, I think that that was, uh, it, I think in literature, they call it the denouement, like the falling action of the, uh, <laughs> the, wait, hold on. The, the denouement. What? That's like, um, so, you know, there's a workup, like it's it, when you're writing, like the fall down. So coming down from Valley. Yeah, so, well, but the coming down part is the denouement. The denouement. Um, How do you spell that? You're going to have to spell that for me. The uncultured denouement. swine. <laughs> <laughs> Cultured swine. I mean, I think I learned that in, like, the seventh grade. I don't know. What? I just, that's one piece. That's something I held on to. Like, don't ask me, um, you know, anything else that's important. I, like, my kid's actual cell phone number, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But I know that. Okay. See, I know, I know the only literally lit, liter, literary term that Ooh, I boy. know is literary fallacies. And essentially what that is, is, and I remember, I, I remember learning it in the Red Badge of Courage. Essentially his entire battalion was white. Spoiler alert, it's about the Civil War. Um, his entire battalion was wiped out and he's the drummer. And he couldn't understand, like it was a miserable, like, it was so sad. So many people died. He couldn't understand why the birds were chirping and why, why the, the, the sky was so bright blue. And, and it was such a nice day when all this tragedy came out and, and pretty much essentially what it means is the nature doesn't give a crap about what kind of a day you're having. So that's a liter, 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 it liter, do be like that literary fallacy. It do be like that. It do be, it, what's that mean? Huh? What does that mean? It, it do be like that. Is that a part of the book? Yeah, that's a, a phrase. It do be like that. It do be like that? Like, I, I'm going to smoke. No, I'm not in do be. Like, it, instead of saying that happens or it does happen, it or it does be like that. I, it's oh, you're slang. I slang. Can't, it do, it be, do be like that. You it know? do be like that. Oh, God. Stop. I'm going to need you to keep up. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm an uncultured swine. You're an uncultured swine. <laughs> oh, oh good God, man. I can't. The, 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 do you have any other examples of things that your kids say that you're like, what? I don't even know what that means. Oh, man, a lot. Where do I start? It's more like they do hand hand motions that I don't get, too. Like, like, well, like, mm, I don't, I, yeah. that's hard to decipher sometimes. But uh, they use this word, uh, simp. I've heard kids use, simple. and I don't even know what it means. I'm like going to be honest. Simple, I, that's easy. I, that's what I would think, but that's not what it means. Like, I, it, I don't even know what it means. I'm still trying to figure it out. Jeez, now it's, that I'm on the spot, I can't think of all of them. I, it took me forever to, I didn't know what the, the WAP or WAP song was. I thought it was a computer term that kept getting mentioned because it was all over Facebook and it was. Wait, so you didn't know what WAP no. stood for? Nope. I didn't know what WAP stood for. 
Do you just, uh, know what it stands I, for now? I do know what it stands for now, but I didn't for stands the for waffles time. and pancakes. That's what I thought. Yes. I, I thought it was like I thought it was some internet term, like uh, I don't know, world analog process or something like that. Nope, you got to get some syrup in a fork for these syrupy pancakes, gotcha. these waffles and pancakes. The, yeah, and the, the milkshake song, um, the the milkshake to the yard. I thought it was a commercial for McDonald's. I thought like they had a new I, jingle. You this know, can't be true. <laughs> no, it was. This can't be true. It was. There are some songs like that though that live rent free in my head, <laughs> and I don't like it. Like I want them to go away. Like safe life, replace safe life, safe repair. Life like why? Like get it out. No. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's awful. Well, that's going to wrap up another episode of the No New Friends podcast. Don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook at No New Friends Podcast. Also, you can email us, no new friends podcast at yahoo.com. Please share, subscribe, follow, support us in any way you can. We want to make this thing grow huge. We'll be back on Wednesday. Okay, bye.